From San Diego, California, this is a One Extraordinary Marriage Show. We're being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call or text us on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663 or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. In today's show, we're talking about the tension that happens between you and your spouse when it comes to hair, clothes, and leaving the toilet seat up in your bathroom. And there's a quote from Austin Kleon that says, marriage is two people in love standing in the same bathroom. And isn't that the truth? So we're going to be having a little fun in today's show talking about the bathroom um, and all that that entails and, and how that impacts your marriage. But we start first and foremost each show with a hug. Hug is an opportunity for you to hear from someone else in the one family whose marriage has been changed mm-hmm. over a period of time. And this week's hug is sponsored by the Position of the Month Club. And we're going to be sharing more about this dynamic group a little bit later on in the show. But first, this hug comes from an email that we received. And this wife says, we are still healing from so many years of rejection and hurt. But man, oh man, what an amazing place to be. I've never been so connected to my husband in all the years of marriage or even when we were dating. Mm. I have fallen in love with him again. And based on the new him, he is looking at me through new eyes. We've implemented the intimacy lifestyle. We completed and worked through your 19 questions. Mm. We've learned so much from each other and our marriage. Ironically, I always thought of my husband as a lower desire spouse. Turns out that our desire is almost a perfect match. I know, mind-blowing. After years of minimal sex, we are now having sex four times a week plus a bonus day. Wow. We're talking about finances and have a monthly budget we do together. We have got all of these things in place and we're happy. Not perfect, but happy to be married and to be one another's person. Mm. To be working on our happily ever after every single day and to be intentional in what we say and do. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much as your podcast started all of this and the results speak for themselves. I am so happy that we decided to work on it and take divorce off the table from a once broken heart to a grateful heart. Wow. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. There it is. Transformation happening as we, as we see it, you know, as they're listening, Mm -hmm. it's working out. And they're just taking action in so many areas of their lives. They didn't just focus on one area. They really, you know, expanded it, but, but got intentional about those conversations Mm -hmm. and decided to take divorce off the table. I think that's the big one. That's the big one, man. When you don't have an hour and you only have one way to go, you're going to start figuring things out. Absolutely. And, you know, as we segue into the show, you know, we're talking about the bathroom, right? And, and, you know, it's one of those areas that, you know, can cause some of you to feel like, oh my gosh, did I marry the right person? Mm -hmm. Like we can't possibly be this different and be married to one another. Like what the heck is going on? And hey, well, what, what I was going to say is like, you know, the hug, she stated that they took divorce off the table. I think there are some times and have been times when I've been sitting in our own bathroom going, what the heck? And thinking about divorce. Oh yeah. Cause there's just so much until tension. we took it off the table. And now it's like, okay, we'll deal with this. We're going to figure it out. Well, and Tony and I were recently at a wedding of a couple in the one family mm-hmm. uh, listeners and you know, we're sitting around this table and we start talking to all the couples there and, and there are couples that have been married 20 plus years like ourselves and there's actually a uh, an engaged couple who was soon to be married and all of a sudden we're talking about, I, I actually just remembered how we got into it. We were talking about first fights. Like okay. what, what was the fight you remembered in your in the oh, early yes. years of your marriage? And one couple started talking about the bathroom. Yes. A, a husband had used his wife's terry cloth robe, which felt like towel material. Well, well and let's, let's go back a little bit. And the reason that happened is because he got out of the shower. Mm-hmm. He was looking around. He, he, he didn't see a floor mat. So he didn't want to step out of the shower and get the floor all wet. He didn't see a towel. But what he did see was his newly wed wife, a, her, her terry cloth robe. And he picked it up put it on the floor and used it to drip on and then wipe himself off. I, I'm just laughing because I wish you all could have been sitting with us when we saw this couple telling the story. They've been married 20 plus years. But that story around a table of people that have been married, like I said, anywhere from a couple years to you know 20 plus years led to all these bathroom 
incidents and conversations and conversations and tensions. And so we start having a good laugh over, you know, how much water gets left on the floor mm-hmm. after somebody takes a shower or, you know, like that couple using each other's robes or towels and not hanging them up or, you know, in our house, the almighty holy grail of bathroom tensions, the hair all over the place, the hair balls, the hair, whatever hair everywhere. And so, so we're, you know, in good humor, we're having this conversation and all joking with the soon to be married couple about just the fact that these are going to be those types of things. And we started going, okay, what does this look like in our own marriage? Mm -hmm. Because Tony and I have been married over 22 years Mm -hmm. and we've definitely had our fair share of bathroom struggles. Yeah. And I would even say over those 22 years, we've had bathrooms that were no more than one sink and a shower and your toilet in there. I mean, pretty tight to where we are now, I would say is probably our largest Mm -hmm. bathroom. I would say, you you know, so we've gone from those to, you know, two sinks, lots of space, tub, shower, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. And yet it doesn't matter if you're using one sink or two sinks, the struggles are real. Well, and it's, it's not just the sinks. It's, you know, the arguments over, you know, does the toilet paper roll over Oh yes. or come under? And mm-hmm. in the one family, 86% of you like it to roll over. We're, uh, we're in the minority here. Tony can nah, not. And, and I would say I'm in the minority. You don't care. I don't care. You don't care. So you, you usually place it rolling over and I always have to change it to go under. I, I honestly, you guys, I do do that. Somebody in the one family on Instagram, love this guy. He, he sends us a picture of his toilet paper roll holder because she likes it one way. He likes it the other way. And so they, he ended up installing one that is open. So you don't have to, you know, the, the little springy you don't have to thing, do the spring thing. Yeah. Right. So whoever's in the bathroom switches it. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. It's, you know, you always look for solutions in yeah. marriage, right? You know, we start talking about the toothpaste, mm-hmm. right? Do you squeeze it or do you roll it? Elisa just squeezes it and gets it all over the place. And I tend to be more like a, a roller. Like I want to make sure it's it's coming out. But she's just like, yeah, it's okay. I'm like, I just need toothpaste on my toothbrush. There's toothpaste all over the, the cap. It's like, it's mushy. It's like, I got to just clean it. Can you tell why we're talking about this today? Yeah. And then, you know, my favorite is the toilet seat lid. Toilet seat and lid. Is it up or down? Like when you're done, do you put it up? You know, do you leave it up? Or do you put it down? Mm-hmm. And person. what was that? That was about 63% of you that actually do put it down. Yeah. And I don't, I think we've just gone to a place with that one where we just take care of it. Well, but I do have to say in the what? middle of the night, there have been many times when I've been grumbling about you because I don't check because mm-hmm. it's the middle of the night. And then the next thing I know, I have a wet hiney because I'm just like... <laughs> I just fell in the toilet. It's 2 a.m. All I want to do is go to the bathroom. And I, re- and I remember hearing those grumbles. And I'm like, yes. yeah. And, and, you know. But I, what, what I want to say with the toilet seat, is there still tension in that one? I think there may still be some tension between you and I. When I fall in, there's definitely tension. Okay. But well, on a day-to-day basis, does it bug you? That one doesn't, but it's definitely, you know, as I looked at the one family, it's definitely still a source of tension. Oh, oh, it definitely is. For us, sure not, for, for us that one is probably the least Mm-hmm. of those three of those that three, we were sure. talking about. And it's one of those areas, like you think about your bathroom, right? And even as we were preparing for the show, it's kind of laughing. I'm like, here's a room that every couple has to deal with every single day. Multiple times a day. Multiple times a day. And yet who the heck is talking about marriage and your bathroom? Because there is definitely a struggle that happens in there. Uh, well, sure. I mean, there have been years, like when I found out what Tony's love language is, or at least was at the time that we did this, to, when we first did the five love languages, mm-hmm. it comes out that Tony's love language is acts of service. And it'd be interesting if we redid that. I've got a quiz. We can totally redo it. Yeah, I think that would be an interesting. And, and I just say that, folks, because recently I've been taking some personality tests. I'm going through what's called the apprenticeship at our at our church uh, through our Pathfinders group. And I took a personality test like five years ago, uh, strength finders took it again recently and they have honestly shifted. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 it would just be interesting to see us do the five love languages again, because I really do believe that there are, there are times in our lives when those things may shift and change. Real quick, you guys yeah. can go to five love language, five love languages.com. Okay. It's actually where I send all my coaching clients when cool. they mention five love languages and they have an online quiz. You can get your results super easy. Um, but it, 
go bring this all back. Tony's love language is acts of service. And I remember thinking at that point in time, I got this nailed, right? Like I do all the stuff around the house. And it turns out that all the stuff that I thought was loving him, you know, like laundry and groceries and, you know, carpooling our kids around wasn't what mattered. He wanted my hair off the sink. Mm -hmm. Coming back to the bathroom, folks, right? Mm -hmm. Coming back to this tension, you know, in marriage and, you know, on the show and things like that. We're so used to hearing about the big stuff, right? We're used to hearing about sex and money and in-laws and dealing with kids. But in marriage, a lot of times it's the little things, that erode our foundation, that erode our intimacy. And there's a verse in the Song of Solomon, verse 215, that says, catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, mm -hmm. our vineyards that are in bloom. And really, if you take a look at this, this verse, it's the little things that can destroy our marriage. It's the mm -hmm. little frustrations. It's the little, oh, that just bugs me so much that you start storing up. And it really gets to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. And Tony, you, know, you were talking about just the sizes of bathrooms yes. that we've had over the years. And I actually, I did a search because I'm like, I don't know what an average bathroom is, right? What does that look like? And so thank, thank goodness for Google because according, based on the size of your house and the age of your house, your bathroom can be anywhere from about 40 square feet to 170 ish square feet. square feet. Okay. And so I think we've been in both. Uh, for sure, we've been in both mm -hmm. because we have we had in our the first home we bought together. Um, yeah, it was like the size of a closet, mm. a small closet, a small closet, a small closet. And I remember that there would be times and that's where we had both our kids in that house. So there would be times when there would be four people standing between a sink, a toilet and a shower. Mm -hmm. And that is where we started the One Extraordinary Marriage show in that home. And we actually would podcast. We would record in our garage. Mm hmm. And that's where this whole thing started. So I remember those days and the tension that would even trying to take a shower together at times was like, oh my gosh, it's so close. And, and, and you're, you're reminding me of the kids would be in there and, you know. Well, not in the shower, but in the bathroom. In the bathroom Because there was though, no room to have. Right. But they would be in there and it was just like, oh my gosh, there's just nowhere to go. Well, and now we've got a bathroom that like the space between the sink and the tub is big enough that I can actually do workouts mm -hmm. in our bathroom, right? I can prop my iPad up on the counter and, you know, do a workout right there and all this kind of stuff. So we've had all of these different things. It's just more space though for her hair to get all over the place. And there you have it folks, <laughs> right? The, it's true though. Because it doesn't matter the size of your bathroom. Size does make a factor. Obviously the smaller bathrooms can create tension just based on size sure. and just frustration of, you know, you've got one toilet and everybody in the house has to go to the bathroom at the same time. Been there, done that, right? You can have multiple bathrooms and everybody can have to go to the bathroom at the same time and you're still stuck with not enough toilets. Correct. Right. You can have this place where you're like, I can't move and you're too close. And, and that's why I love that quote that marriage is, you know, two people in love standing in the same bathroom mm -hmm. because you really can go through all of the emotions in marriage when you're in that place. And, you know, as we talk through this, it's not just about complaining about your bathroom or complaining about the frustrations. And, and I w do want to share some of the more common ones. It's figuring out what you're going to do about it and making the choice that these complaints aren't just going to be something that you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. It's not a big deal. It's just a bathroom. But to step into a place of saying, hold on a second, what would happen if just like in that, that verse that I read, if we start catching those little bathroom foxes, mm -hmm. right? If we start addressing those things that are nuisances to our spouse, could we create a shift in intimacy based on the fact that we're tackling this one room? So walking into the bathroom is not a source of frustration for our spouse, but rather just a place of peace. Like, oh, that looks good. And, and I would say on the other hand, on the other side of that is what can I do when I walk into that bathroom. So we have two options, right? I can be frustrated with Elisa's hair, which it is. It, it's, it, it does happen. And yet over the years, I've come to realize that, you know what? Just pick it up. Like if I see it and it's bugging me, just pick it up. And sometimes we have to do that in marriage. Sometimes that's what we do. You know, we, we serve our spouse and, and, and in doing so, we take care of that frustration. So Elisa and I can banter and have fun about this. And really there, we, we still have areas where, where we're, oh my gosh, that's just not working. So we'll have to discuss it because it's true. It, it, if we allow those little foxes to keep chomping away, 
it's going to it's going to lead into bigger things and and on the big scheme of life this is an area that we do spend a lot of time in mm-hmm. and yet i'm not going to allow alisa like just squeezing the toothpaste from the middle drive a wedge between us it, it may sound crazy and yet i have met husbands and we have met wives and talked to couples where where that can become a deal breaker and it doesn't need to be like Squeezing your toothpaste or having some hair on the floor shouldn't be the deal breaker for you to look down at divorce in your marriage. Yes, there are other things happening, but you're letting these little things become big things when they really shouldn't be. Well, and I just, I want to address some of the most common complaints. Yes, let's do it. Because we asked the one family, you know, what's your biggest, basically, what's your biggest source of frustration when it comes to the bathroom? And as I look over the top five on this list... I'm standing here, one, thinking about the fact that my sink is not clean right now, even as we record this show. And two, I'm thinking each one of these has been a source of tension in our own marriage. Mm -hmm. So just know y'all are not alone when it comes to these frustrations. The first one is hair, hair everywhere, his hair, her hair, shaving, uh, beard trimmings, uh, long hair in the, in the tub, in the sink, on the floor, you name it, hair. Hair was the number one one thing it, it was yeah like the little hairballs and in and, and, and a lot of it I, I i remember reading a number of them were from wives just going like beard hair like just clean the sink up or whatever it may be hair on the on the countertop on the on the mirrors whatever it was that was the number one tension i would say well and husbands want their wives to get the hair off the, the you know out of the tub or out of the mm-hmm. drain or things like so it, this is not like let me be real clear each one of these complaints were voiced by both husbands and, and wives. wives. Yep. This is not this is not one sex bashing on the other. The complaints were all over the place, mm-hmm. which I love because it really speaks to who the one family is. True. Right? We're, we're not a community that's like, oh, well, this is all about husbands or this is all about wives, but it's saying, let's just talk about what our frustrations are. The second one was dirty sinks. Yep. Right? So that's not cl- rinsing the sink after you've brushed your teeth. That's the hair again. That's, you know, makeup around the, you know, in the sink. That's all of those different things. You're just like, clean the sink. I think that's a little easier when you have two. I will I will say that. Mm-hmm. In, in, in even for, because I don't even think about that one anymore because you have your own sink. I have my own sink. I don't even, I mean, I may glance at yours and see it. And yet it doesn't even bother me because I'm like, that's her sink. Let her do her thing with it. And I have my, when we did share a sink though, oh man, you better believe that was a, a, a place of like, Alisa, like, do, and I'm just saying, this is from me and even myself, like having to like go, wow, Tony, you know what? You do need to clean it out after you shave. You, you need to wipe it down if you have dirty hands and you've come in with dirt all over your hands and like just clean down, clean down the sink, wash it down. But I, I think having two does help. It definitely helps for us. Absolutely. Uh, another one is whose turn it is to clean it. I don't even think we have that. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually got to a point in my life where I'm like, I just simply do not like to clean. So I will hire out for this. Yes, you do. Right? Like it's just, it's one of those things that I take off my plate because it's just not worth the source of frustration. Mm -hmm. But if that's not your dynamic, then you have to have the conversation around whose turn it is to clean it and not make that be a power struggle. Mm -hmm. And just as an aside, if your spouse doesn't clean the bathroom the way that you would like it to be cleaned, deal with that yourself. And I think this is a tough one to talk about depending on... When you were born, how you were brought up, this can be a difficult place to be. And I will I will share from my upbringing and how I saw life in this area. In all honesty, my mom cleaned almost every Saturday. Every like Saturday, mom, mom would go around the house and she would clean. Like she'd do the bathrooms, she would do the, the bedroom, she would vacuum the kitchen, the whole thing. And so going into marriage... I, I'm just telling you this. This is truth. This is this is, and you got to understand where where it, it could be the other side of it. You never saw either of your parents ever clean, so to you, it's like who cares? It, it's it's okay. Um, or you saw maybe your father would do it because he was a stay at home dad or whatever. But I think that plays a big role. And for our marriage, it did because getting married at 23, other than going off to college and taking care of my own bathroom, which we really didn't take care of because we were a bunch of guys living in houses. My thing was like, hey, Elisa, you need to take care of the, the the bathrooms and the cleaning. 
we've come around, we've learned. And I don't mind it, honestly. I, I will do some cleaning, but like Elisa, we're just like, let's just hire this out. Let somebody else just take care of it once a month and it, it gets all nice it and gets all nice and done. Yes. And, and yes, I was just And that's laughing. just how we do it. Because you have to come to that understanding in your own marriage. You know, and two other complaints were clutter on the counters, right? Where you're just like, oh my gosh, there's stuff everywhere. And the stuff could be makeup, it could be, you know, shaving products, it could be all different kinds of stuff, but it's on the counters and it's mm-hmm. making your spouse a little cray cray. Mm-hmm. And finally, the the number five was towels or clothes or both left on the floor. Mm-hmm. And, and, and specifically clothes left right next to the hamper. Like yeah. the clothes didn't make it to the hamper, but they're right next to the hamper. And having been there and done that and heard Elisa complain about that and her doing the same thing, totally get it. And sometimes the hamper doesn't even make it back up from the laundry. So then the clothes just sit on the floor. Yes. Or bigger now for us, our kids come in our bathroom and take our towels. So every time we try to go take a shower. There are no towels. There are no towels. So that's a that's a, that's a whole nother dynamic that maybe you face as well. Yeah. Some people lose socks. We lose towels in our house mm-hmm. because we have teenagers. But you know, this room that you use all the time doesn't have to be a source of frustration. We can really step into a place of of thinking through what are those one, what's that one thing, the little thing that I could do to make a huge difference in my marriage. And and we want to share some strategies around that. But first we want to thank this week's sponsor, the position of the month club. And this week's show, like I said, was brought to you through the position of the month club partners. And we're so blessed to have these faithful partners who are experiencing just this transformative power of being intentional in their marriage, very much like that hug Mm -hmm. that we read to start the show. And, you know, as one summit partner shared with us, we've never had a place where we can openly comment, discuss, and share information about sex. I enjoy the fact that we all have a safe place to openly discuss tough topics. I also love that we get to communicate with like-minded couples. This is a true community. And so if you'd like to learn more about joining us in the Position of the Month Club, check it out at positionofthemonthclub.com. All of our monthly partners receive a special e-magazine delivered to their inbox each month with ideas and articles on how to invigorate their marriages. Some levels of partnership are also invited into monthly video chats with us and discounts through the online store at One Extraordinary Marriage. So we'd love it if you would join us and consider maybe even since we're heading into wedding season, Mm -hmm. consider gifting a membership to a friend or family member. You can learn more at position of the month club.com. So as we talk about what are those strategies around the bathroom, as you've been listening to this show, you're, you've been thinking, I know you have of what frustrates you in the bathroom. Sure. And you've probably also had a little thought popping up in the back of the head that you know what frustrates your spouse mm-hmm. about how you handle the bathroom because they've brought it up at least once or twice. And, and I want you to think through what is it costing you in your marriage to not take action on this, right? What does that look like? Do you need to keep having the same argument about the bathroom? You know, is, is there a level of frustration? Is there a level of anger that you encounter after, you know, so many times when your spouse walks into the bathroom and they're like, oh my gosh, just do this. Or maybe they don't say anything, right? And so, so you're just in this kind of like, eh, place, right? That cost, you can actually reverse. You know, Tony brought up that last year was, last year's hashtag was what can I do? Mm-hmm. And while it may be the smallest room in your house, this is one that no joke, you guys, you could stop listening to this podcast right now. Don't, but you could, right? Stop listening to this podcast right now. Walk into your bathroom or do it when you get home today. Look around and pick one thing that you could do to directly impact your marriage today. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And I would say for for many of you, you can turn your your we've we've shared this before like turn your turn your bedroom into that romantic that romantic room that you've always desired like turn that room into something that's just absolutely amazing you can do this with your bathroom yes because there are many of you in the one family who honestly your bathroom is sort of your sacred place for the two of you to get away to to love on each other to just l- allow the world to just fade away for a little bit Mm -hmm. and just enjoy one another. So as you look at that bathroom, you you can look at it as two ways. It's just functional. Hey, we use it to go to the bathroom. 
you know, we leave the toilet up, we t- put it down, whatever. We, we put the toilet paper over under. We, we use it just to brush our teeth, you know, to put on our makeup, to, to you know, trim our beard, shave, whatever it may be. And yet, if we looked at it as a place that could be an area that we truly can connect, right? Mm -hmm. Or we can use that bathroom. We can use that shower. We can, we can use that tub to put us in a different place, both mentally, emotionally, sexually, what could happen in there? I'll tell you some of the, some of the, the most fun we've had making love is in our shower. Mm Mm-hmm. It is. It's a place where we just get, we get away. It's the the shower's on, the heat's on, and we're just in there. Nobody's bugging us. You know, for some of you, it may be you love that bathroom soak. It just, you want to sit in that bathtub because you get to just fade away for a little bit. And maybe both of you can get in there together. We've had hugs and emails come in. Just recently we read that hug. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, just sitting in the tub together allowed them to connect because everything else just got to fade away. Mm-hmm. But we got to take care of all the, the, the little foxes. Are we going to allow those little foxes to take over what could really be extraordinary in our bathroom? Well, and, and that's where you all are so empowered. Mm-hmm. Right? So often when there's challenges or, or you know, difficulties in marriage, you get into this place of, I don't know that I can do anything. Mm-hmm. Right. And I look at your bathrooms and some of you may still be chuckling over the fact that we've just dedicated a whole show to the bathroom. But I wonder, I wonder what would happen if, you know, with all the other stuff that can be pulling at your marriage, I wonder what would happen if you did take that action and you went into your bathroom and you said, you know what, what would it look like if I made this a sanctuary? It doesn't matter if it's 40 square feet or 170 square feet. What would happen today if this wasn't an issue for my spouse? And could I step into this place of saying, you know what? It's our bathroom. Some people may think it's not that big a deal, but other people, you know what? This is going to be another place where we create intimacy in our marriage. And we're going to do this together. Some of you may just need to say, you know what? Like, let's clear out the tub of all the kids' toys. Let's just have, you know, let's have a bucket on the side and we're just going to get the kids' toys out of here so that when we're in the bathroom, it's just us. Yeah. Some of you are going to, you know, make sure that you've got the wipes under the sink whatever type of white brand you love and you're going to wipe down the sink once a day or you're going to wipe the toothpaste splatters off the mirror or you're going to, you know, wipe down the hair. Instead of being opposite, and we share this so often in so many areas of marriage, the bathroom is is like any other. Instead of being against each other, let's stand on the same side together and let's be a team together as we look at our bathroom and make it work for both of us. It's... It's no small thing, right? It's a place where the two of you can have greater unity. It's a place where you don't have to be fighting each other. It's a place where if you just take one of your spouse's complaints about the bathroom, and they may only have one, but you take that one, and this is the day, this is the week that you say, you know what, I'm just going to own this. I'm going to take care of this, and I'm going to make it be something that they don't have to complain about. How much energy do you free up for your spouse to then love on you, mm-hmm. to connect with you, to be engaged with you? Beca- and, if you're, and if you're the one who's dropping the clothes on the floor right next to the hamper, pick it up. Like, in all honesty, just take responsibility for you and make it happen. Mm-hmm. It, it does, the bathroom doesn't have to be you know, a make or break struggle in your marriage. And it, it's something that you can, you can create a shift and you can do it today. Like this is this is one of those shows, honestly, guys, where I can't wait to see the comments that get shared with us on this because somebody's going to say, you know what? I went in and I pulled all the hair out of out of the sinks, or I went in and I I vacuumed the floor. I took action on my bathroom and I saw a smile on my spouse's face, and it was worth the five minutes that I spent to make that smile happen. And I'm and I'm gonna. Make sure that Elisa takes that action today. Uh, honestly, that is, it's great. Both of us can. We learn as well. We, we share with you guys because you guys are absolutely amazing at, at sharing your lives with us. And so this week, go out there. Hey, make that, make, that, make that bathroom a sanctuary. 
Make it somewhere where you're, you, you enjoy one another, but it doesn't cause the tension that it needs to cause. And maybe, hey, while you're at it, turn on, turn on the shower, get in the bathtub, enjoy one another, make love, and, and just go, you know what? Let's make this place something extraordinary. We love you guys. Have a fantastic week, and we will catch you next week. Can't wait to hear from you, so make sure you just drop us a line at 858-876-5663. Love you guys.